So, I got some feedback on my video about the fact that the loans used to create U.S. debt are definitely going to be defaulted on at some point. It was an interesting enough question that I decided to make an entire video on it, so this is that. The question was, and people feel safe with crypto? So I thought I'd answer that with my take on it. Suffice it to say, people don't actually feel safe with crypto, but it's safer than fiat currency, so they actually should. Why am I saying this? Well, for anyone who's read my angry screed on the difference between Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and fiat currency, you know that the comparison of cryptos to fiat currency upsets me. Largely due in part to the evils I describe whenever I talk about the US dollar. The way I described it in my video yesterday can't be applicable equally to things like cryptocurrency. It simply doesn't work. So today, I'm going to go over 10 reasons why cryptos are better than fiat currency. Starting at number 10, anyone can make them. The fact that production of cryptocurrencies is not delegated to a federally approved authority means that its value is not based on statism. Its value is based on the people who run nodes and the people who support the nodes. It's a community that exists outside current economic paradigms. I mean, yeah, its value is assumed to be tied to the dollar, for now, but it's reasonably shockproof beyond that, and it doesn't need the dollar to exist. You don't need permission to print this money. All you need is hardware and the support of a group of people. It brings community back to the people. It empowers people to have their own control over their own economic destiny. It allows them to have full control over their modes of exchange if they want it and if they're willing to work to have it. The point is, it's up to you. And that also means there's someone to hold accountable if things go wrong. That brings me to number nine. When the dollar fails, Bitcoin will still be there. Cryptos are resilient. They aren't swayed by the tides of popular opinion, nor plagued by the need to co-sign certain politics in order to continue existing. Yes, there might be some drama in the communities in question, but there always would be anyway. Yes, there might be hard and soft forks when some of that drama gets to a certain point, but that's exactly what makes it better than fiat currency. If the dollar fails, it has no way to fall back on. The dollar can't have a hard fork. It can't even fork at all. If the dollar ever fails, the state will fall back on its old tricks of using violence to get what they want rather than market forces. And that brings me to eight. It's an asset. If the economy of a country crashes, those with the most diverse portfolios will be the most successful. Having metals is a good choice, especially lead. Having food is good as well. But the existence of a crypto economy means that there's a safety net for the digital trading economy. If you have it, people who have the hardware can trade just as easily as in the good old days. No state needed. And in the ensuing chaos, it might be beneficial to have access to a network of stable values. Metals can be adulterated, and food can go bad, but code is forever. Which brings me to seven. It's more transparent. Federal Reserve has an unelected, unaccountable, unknown group of shady benefactors on its board. Its shareholders have been siphoning wealth off the American people, and by extension, the world, guiding economic policies for nations which aren't even this one. And we don't even get to know who they are. There's been some speculation as to who they are, but nobody knows for sure. And because the Federal Reserve is exactly as federal as Federal Express, it's been largely immune to audits. So, sure, your cryptocurrency might fail, but when it does, people will know who to blame. So you're incentivized to keep on track, unlike those on the board of the Federal Reserve. They don't have to give a fuck, and they don't. They have powerful interests to serve, which can keep their back covered. Which brings me to point six. It's more secure and less susceptible to powerful influence. In America, there are these uh, constitution-free zones everywhere associated with the border. There are also significant amounts of law enforcement crawling everywhere. 
They often have the ability to search your vehicle, house, and more, and when they do, they often have the ability to seize assets for one reason or another. If you cross the border with too much, they might seize some of it. If you have enough of it on your person at any given point for any reason, they might seize it under civil asset forfeiture laws, or they might just steal it and claim you never had it to begin with. The fact that this currency can exist in the cloud, and the fact that you could have it on a secure device which they can't access, means they can't shake you down for it. This is a huge benefit to anybody trying to maintain possession of their assets, especially in a world where cops can regularly get away with being robbers. Which brings me to five. This stuff can travel the world. Whether you want to send money back to your family in another country, or whether you want to send money to yourself so that you can cash it in another country, cryptocurrencies are valuable for either purpose. It's true international money, as long as you've got a cryptocurrency ATM somewhere in the place you plan to visit. This also makes it very good for somebody on the run. All you need to do is swap some addresses around and you have a money supply that can't be frozen. It's great if you want to become and remain gray. It's also great if you're just a normal citizen, but want control over your assets, even though you're moving a certain amount of distance over a certain amount of imaginary lines. Which brings me to four. It's trustless. You don't have to wonder whether or not the transaction occurred, or whether or not the computer systems were functioning properly, or whether or not somebody scammed you with an account number. The public blockchain allows you to see for yourself all of the aspects of the market which you would need to see in order to feel confident in your participation. This sort of answers the question about safety. It's not necessarily that people feel safe, but compared to fiat currency which is subject to the whims of a banking institution or the ideology of the global elites, you can feel much safer in participating in this market versus others, especially if you're doing something the elites would rather you not. Additionally, no loans were required to bring these currencies into existence for the most part, certainly not Bitcoin. So if people cash their debt, the market won't collapse. It's much more secure than the US dollar in that way, for the reasons I went over in my video two days ago. Which brings me to three. It's decentralized. With no central authority backing and issuing it, it doesn't have the same political vulnerability as fiat currency does. Additionally, since anyone can own and maintain a copy of the record, central power can't manipulate it. Among the many problems with fiat, especially US fiat, politicians can spend us into the dirt, and when shit starts to go sideways, they can just print more money. Which has to do with my next point, and cook their books. The blockchain is held by loads of nodes, and is not susceptible to the whims of a desperate hack trying to sort out his political career. And if you don't trust everyone to keep an authentic copy, Get the core node for whatever crypto you're talking about and keep a record yourself. No need to ask for permission, file a lawsuit, send a Freedom of Information Act request, schedule an audit, or anything else. You want to know? Well, find out. Power is in your hands. When the power is in theirs, they can do with it whatever they want. So, point two, it has a fixed supply. Most cryptos have a cap on how many can exist, built into the code. This cap doesn't change. You can't print more cryptos. And since no central authority is issuing or controlling them, they can't just arbitrarily decide to change that cap. The US are printing themselves into the grave, but if used properly, cryptos could outlive many governments. Anyone who saw my vid on how the US government absolutely has to default can know that the US dollar is based on debt, not wealth. For every unit of dollars that is printed, another two units of debt are created at least. Not so with cryptos. There's no Bitcoin Federal Reserve or Ethereum Mint. It's not up to them to maintain the currency. So they can't decide to fuck it into the dirt. In Zimbabwe, Mugabe fucked just like that. And there's a blooming crypto community now, replacing the failed national currency in their transaction with many cryptos, so they can have value in their transactions, and so they can spend it how they want. 
Mugabe can decide not to allow ZWD or RTGS out of the country to add that to his list of murderous dictatorial acts, but unless he turns off the internet they use to trade, he can't turn off cryptocurrency. Similarly, the US government can't disable cryptos without eliminating their internet, and the net is something pacifying the populace, a subject I'll be hitting soon, so they won't. This means the fixed supply will always be both fixed and accessible. And number one, it pisses people off who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. This benefit speaks for itself. When I have a currency which will constantly be in the news because some boomer lost his password or because an idiot thinks it's another tulpan money, you've come to the right place. Want to have the ethical upper hand on people using currency based on death, destruction, oppression, and more so they can be angry you're not on team whatever country it is? Stick around. Want to make people who don't even understand how their own currency works angry when you cash in as crypto's moon again, acting like you robbed a bank? You're in good company. Point is, there's a lot to appreciate. And since I'm exposing problems, I might as well talk solutions, too. Cryptos are a solution. They're not perfect, but nothing is. Your metals can be stolen, adulterated, and otherwise tampered with. Your currency can crash. So can any other physical asset. The blockchain is inalterable, and you don't need to purity test it or bite it to see if it's soft. The weights and measures can be done from a properly equipped PC, smartphone, or server. It's the cypherpunk future you wanted growing up but it's here. Plus, if you want an extra layer of security to ensure your asset is well used, build an app around the blockchain. Because another great thing is that it's basically still software. Then, people will value what runs your crypto and they'll keep it alive just to keep use of the service. I'll be making a vid on great dApps coming up, so be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. And also consider supporting this content if you appreciate it, with links in the description. But take this list. Next time some detached fogey tells you this magic internet money ain't no good, you can tell him to shove it. And there's no time like the present. So get mining or hodling or both. And trash the banks.